Now, we understand that uh, we have a lot of stone to test in Hong Kong, and we have so many laboratories in Hong Kong, overseas, local established. And there, there, there are many gemstone transactions, many jewelry transactions in Hong Kong. That is because we can make some money in here. Wherever we have money-making area, there must be something fake or something seems to be look real, but finally they are not natural or they are treated. That's why we have to use some method or instrumentation to find out what kinds of gemstone it is. Such as we have received, say, like ruby, sapphire stone, emerald stone, jade stone every day, maybe 20, 30, or 50 pieces, or sometimes up to two, 300 pieces a day. Most of the time, we should start with conventional gem testing instrument first. We can't use, we can't all the time employ like advanced instrument like X-ray, infrared, because it is quite time consuming. So inevitably, we should start with the conventional gemological instrument like refractometer, polaroscope, and we have to look at all gemstone with microscope. Now, talking about advanced gemological instruments, when and why we use, use it. Sometimes we receive a big piece of J carving, say like 80 kilo. We can employ the 80 kilos J carving stone with SG determination. The density cannot be tested. And sometimes the surface area are so rough so refractometer also cannot help. At that time, we should employ some advanced instruments to overcome all such limitations of applications. Instrument like uh, uh, this one, the portable ramen, we are the first lab in Hong Kong employ the portable ramen uh, spectrometer to test jadei and some nephrite stone. And this is interest spectrometer we are the first lab in Hong Kong employ the uh, interest spectrometer test for the J uh, stone in 1992 and early 1993. And we are the first lab in Hong Kong employ the German broker infrared spectrometer with the diffuse reflection adapter to find out the fingerprint or reflective uh, spectra of gemstones in the range of six, 1,600 to 400 uh, CM to the power minus one. Now, this is another common instrument now becomes common. And though around about 10 years ago, it is quite luxury. This is a diamond sure to test the uh, diamond absorption for type 1A diamond. This is UV visible spectrometer, and that one is EDEX, ED, uh, infrared X ray fluorescent analysis spectrometer. Now, we can't step beyond the conventional. First of all, we're still looking at gemstone in, uh, inclusions by microscope, such as straight line, root out needles, bone mine needles, or maybe curve bending for synthetic stones. But sometimes, some inclusion is quite uh, difficult to, to be identified, such as these kinds of silk, or maybe similar to silk inclusion. They may be heated. They may be subjected to some kinds of infusion, such as glass filtered or maybe light glass filtered as well. So that's why using basic gemological microscopic examination may not be helped. Luckily, some ruby or maybe some stone has been filtered with light glass, may get some kinds of bluish flash. So this is very, very distinctive, as in this morning, Dr. Heine and also uh, some other uh, uh, gemologists already point out, we can always look for some kinds of visual, visualized, uh, identified characteristics for certain gemstones. Now, like this necklace, this one, so sent it to us for testing, and uh, it is not having any like a color flash, but the stone is uh, high, heavily included, and it is not very clear. And the client declared that the, the necklace is approximately around one quarter of a million of Hong Kong. For ruby, it is not expensive. Many, many pieces is a necklace. But when we put this 
ruby necklace by our index, we found out that there is quite high PB, the lead content, after the X-ray fluorescent analysis. So for such a, uh, like a larger pieces of necklace, it is easy for us to test whether it's contain high content of lead in the composition. Now, one of the best or one of the, the most applicable uh, advanced instruments amongst many, I would say, infrared spectrometer. It is very useful and it is very powerful now. Now, sometimes we receive big piece of J carving. Density test is difficult because there are many different holes there, cavities there. So bubbles trapped inside, accurate density measurement is not, is not possible. And looking at the surface, they are full of different carving area and refractive index also hard to find, hard to, hard to determine. So what happened with it? Because of the diffuse reflector, it is very simple and very easily to have the, what we call the reflection spectra of this jadeite stone. And it is very fast, and it only costs us around about 30 seconds to complete this uh, reflection spectra of the IR spectra. Now, another, the same big pieces, okay. Because of the advanced instrument application, we are luckily, we can charge a little bit high price to our client. Infrared spectrometer also good for detect the resin content in JDI. So the left hand side, this is non JDI, non resin impregnated JDI. On the right hand side, this is resin impregnated JDI. For practicing gemologists, these two graphs are very familiar with us. Now, around about several years ago, uh, we have noticed some China uh, research paper already mentioned about testing the general electric synthetic JDI by the application of infrared spectrometer. Now, the free trough, one, two, and three, which is 3373, 3470, and 3614 are the diagnostic absorption trough, transmission trough of such uh, general electric synthetic JDI. And it is very diagnostic. So once again, we take a look. This is the ordinary natural JDI infrared spectrum between 4,000 to 2,000 centimeters to the power minus one, and that is the synthetic JDI the graph. It is very easy to, de to be detected by means of infrared spectrometry. Also, infrared spectrometer possible to help gemologists to identify natural emerald, hydrothermal synthetic emerald, as well as flux melts synthetic emerald. Another useful instrument nowadays in my laboratory is the ultraviolet visible spectrometer. In the old day, or presently, we still employ spectroscope to look at the spectrum of JDI stone. The top one is the natural JDI with the free absorption lines in the red, and the center one, it is a dyke JDI with the fuzzy band approximately around 6,500, and that is a B plus C resin impregnated and color a dyed JDI. But nowadays, we employ ultraviolet and visible spectrometer. The graph is like this. The 437 and the three different peaks, okay, making this is a natural JDI uh, absorption spectra with the UV visible uh, spectrometer analysis. On the right-hand side, that is the dye color uh, JDI UV visible graph, that one. Now, the UV visible spectrometer nowadays, we can, we are luckily in Hong Kong. We can buy a kind of freezer. Say like we can uh, hold a freezer bottle and then just splay the cool air in uh, like, a, like a freon into the gemstone. And we can apply it to that cool diamond with the UV visible spectrometer and we can very easily to detect the 595 or 594 uh, irradiated absorption line also by the ultraviolet spectrometer. Okay, Raman. 
This is the first uh, portable ramen that we have, and it is very useful. And it is the latest. We're using green, uh, green wavelength ramen. I call it ramen tank because this is very durable. Ramen spectrometer is another very useful uh, high technology instrument helping gemologists to identify many gemstones, such as for any diamonds material, it will always give one free, free zero uh, CM power minus one, a diagnostic diamond Raman spectrum. But this Raman spectrum will go for natural diamond as well as synthetic diamond. So as long as it is uh, diamond materials, the Raman spectrometer will give the same peaks. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have attention? The Peking Man. Okay, this is another interesting collect collection of my testing uh, like a file. It's one of my clients sent me an a 80 kilo, uh, uh, kilogram weight of a big pieces of the Peking Man, and it is made of black jadeite. Raman spectrometer sometimes is good for jadeite analysis for the white color, for the black color, but for green color, it is always come with a kinds of fluorescence. That means the fluorescence is always come together with a Raman response. So for green color, JDI, Raman spectrometer, may have some little problem. But for white and for black JDI, it is excellent. Now the graph, the graph it is, is like this. 374, 698, and 1038. That three peaks are the diagnostic of JDI Raman spectra. Capital luminescence unit. Around about 10 years ago, DTC, they make diamond sure as well as diamond view. Using these two instruments, we can screen natural diamonds as well as uh, some uh, synthetic diamond. But they, there's not much mention about the cathode luminescence. But actually, cathode luminescence is a very powerful like a, a, a unit possible to help gemologists for many different testing aspects. This is the uh, photos taken under cathode luminescence. On the left-hand side, this is type 1A. It always gives us a blue fluorescence. Okay, that is type 1B, the yellowish fluorescence, of yellowish luminescence from the C, uh, CL. And type 2A, the synthetic CVD, always give us pinkish or pinkish red luminescence. And the greenish blue is go for the CVD and HPHD synthetic. So by, the, by means of cathode luminescence, sometimes helping gemologists to classify the type of diamond and also identify certain type of synthetic, it is quite easily. But we have to be aware of exposed. Our diamond cannot be too long under this cathode luminescence unit because it may making some kinds of like a surface treatment afterwards. So usually we're limited to, to have say like 20 seconds for every of our single test. Cannot be too long. Interesting is when I learned something from Dr. Heine several years ago, how to identify a uh, 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 freshwater pearl as well as a uh, saltwater culture pearl. Now we found out that there is another interesting unit, the cathode luminism unit, can help. On the left hand side here, this one, the yellow luminescence one, is actually freshwater pearl. And the swatch water pearl would be inert. That means no reaction under CL. So this is another interesting method for testing pearls come from the origin of freshwater or maybe salt water. Recently, we also employ our lift machine to identify the pavilion contents in certain color sapphire. But we understand that this Lipsch machine, we have to uh, use it very carefully because it is always possible to make some scratch or make a very tiny burning on the uh, testing area. So we restrict to the uh, girdle area and we have to uh, 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 use a, like a micro camera to look at the position that we try to take a small burn in order to find out the pavilion uh, contents in such a sapphire. 
So that is the treated, uh, Bavillium treated uh, corundum, and it is very useful by means of uh, lips testing, and we can always find out if it is containing very high pavilion, the free 13.1 one free one nanometer is always there. And we also have to thank Professor Yuang and help us for some technology, uh, technical application, technical, te technical uh, uh, area to solve some of the little problems of the setup of the lips. Thank you, Professor Yang, also. Once again, uh, the advanced instrument will be a niche for the uh, gem testing the laboratory practice on today. And I think one day, what we always declare as advanced technology will become com conventional technology for laboratory of gemstone for all the uh, decent and practical laboratory. And thank you very much. Sigur,刚才我们莫院长给大家介绍了现代仪器的一些音乐。那么说了很多他自己的经验。好,看看大家还有什么需要莫老师进一步补充的地方。请大家提提问题。Molly取了一个红包呢,除了EDXRF和E